In an earlier session, we looked at cost bookkeeping. Now, in a job costing environment, we will also keep job accounts or T accounts for each individual job. And in the T accounts, we will build up the costs associated with that job. I'm going to have a look at an exercise where we prepare a few job accounts. The key rule you need to remember here is that anything that increases the cost of the particular job is shown on the debit side. Anything that decreases the cost of the job is shown as a credit. So, let's have a look at our exercise then. We're told the following information concerns Sunflower Limited. At the end of last month, there was an incomplete job. And the cost to date in total were £1,830. So at the start of the month then, the opening balance on job 6832 was 1830 At the start of the month then, two further jobs were started, 6833 and 6834. By the end of the month, 6832 and 33 were completed, which means 6834 was incomplete by the end of the month. Then we have the costs associated with each job for the current month. So we have the direct material cost for the month for each of our three jobs. Then we see we had some material transfers. So we moved some materials from one job to another job. There were some materials returned to store or returned to our warehouse. And then we're given information about our direct labor hours recorded for each of the three jobs. Finally then, we're told our production overheads are absorbed at a rate of £2 per labour hour. Now we just need to update our job accounts for all of this information. If we look below, <coughs> we've got our three T accounts for jobs 6832, 6833 and 6834. Remember... As I said, a debit shows an increase in the cost and a credit shows a decrease in the cost. So, what we will do is then, we're going to go through our information again. This time, we want to pick up all of the information associated with job 6832. We'll enter that information into the job account and then we'll move on and do the same thing for job 6833. So if we have a look back at our question, the first thing we are told about job 6832 is that we had an opening balance of £1,830. So that will be the first thing we will show in our job account. So our opening balance will be a debit and we're told it's 1830 Straightforward enough. Let's move on to our second piece of information which will be in relation to direct materials. So we're told that during the current month there were £2,390 worth of materials issued to job 6832. But we just also need to be careful, as we see below in our material transfers, we transferred £620 worth of material from job 6832 to job 6833. And in addition, we have been told that £870 worth of material were returned to the warehouse. So let's have a look at our job account then and see how we record all of this information. Starting with our original direct materials issued. 
If we issue materials to a job, does that increase or decrease the cost of the job? Well, if it increases the amount of material used in the job, that's going to be an increase in the cost. So we'll show that on the debit side. So we've got our direct materials issued of 2,390. The next thing we noted about materials was that there was uh, £620 worth of material transferred from job 3.2 to job 3.3. Three. So if we take materials and move them out of a particular job, is that going to increase or decrease the costs associated with that job? Well, if we're reducing the amount of material used in the job, that's going to decrease the costs associated with the job. So we'll record our material transfer on the credit side. And there is a value of 620. Now we just need to make sure that we also record this in the job account for 6833. If we have transferred materials to job 6833, that's going to increase the costs associated with 6833. So we'll record this as a debit in the job account for 6833. £620 material transfer. Continuing on then with job 6832, the next thing we were told was that there was materials returned to the stores department with a value of £870. If we have returned material to the stores department, it means they were surplus to requirements. We did not use them on this job. So that will decrease the costs associated with this job. So we'll record our returns as a credit. And that's all of our entries for job 6832 in relation to materials. Let's have a look back at the question and see what else have we been told about job 6832. We're told that the direct labour hours recorded for job 6832 were 430 hours. And labour is charged at £8 per hour. So again, any direct labour hours we work on this job will increase the costs of the job. So we'll record it on the debit side. So we've got our direct labour. <coughs> 430 multiplied by 8 should give us 3,440. Then our final piece of information was that our production overheads are absorbed at the rate of £2 per labour hour. So in our job account, we've got our production overhead charge per labour hour. We know there's been 430 hours on job 6832. Multiplied by our charge of £2 gives us 860. So we've done all of our entries now for job 6832. And all that remains is to close out the, the account. We know that our credit and debit sides must equal. So if you do a quick total then of the debit side, so all of the costs associated with the job, we get 8,520. 
We were told in the question that job 6832 was completed by the end of the month, which means our balancing figure on the credit side will be the value of our finished goods. We calculate this as our balancing figure, so 8520 minus 620 minus 870. When we do that, we should get 7,030. What this 7,030 represents then is the total cost to the company of completing job 6832. Moving on then to job 6833, we just need to do the very same thing again. We've already recorded our material transfer which increase the cost of this job. Again, let's start with our direct materials. On job 6833, we were told that the direct materials issued had a value of 1,680. What else do we have in the question about the materials relating to 6833? Let's have a look. So we've recorded our direct materials issued of 1,680. We've recorded the transfer from 6832 to 6833. If we look just above that, we see that there was also a transfer from job 6834 to 6833. So again, if we sent these materials over to job 6833, then that increases the cost of 6833. So we'll show that as a debit in our job account. So we've got a second material transfer into job 6833, this time from 6834. And the value was 250. We'll just quickly also record that in our job account for 6834. We had a material transfer out of job 6834, so this reduces the cost of 6834, and we record it as a credit. Going back up to 6833 then, what did we have after our materials? I think next we have our direct labour. We were told in the current period... There were 650 hours spent on job 6833 at a charge of £8 per hour. So in total then, 5200 And finally then, our production overheads charged at £2 per labour hour gives us 1,300. And we have nothing on our credit side at the moment and because there was nothing we were told about that decreased the costs. So if we just balance our account then, sum up the debit side, punch it into your calculators, hopefully you will get 9,050. We know that the credit side must equal. And again, we were told that by the end of the month, job 6833 had been completed. So our balancing figure on the credit side is the value of our finished goods. And we've completed the job account for number 6833. Only one more to go, job number 6834, let's have a look. So for 6834, we've recorded our material transfer, which reduced the costs of this job. 
are direct materials issued to job 6834 during the month were 3950. Next we have our direct labor. There were 280 hours worked on job 6834. Cost of eight pounds per hour gives us 2240. And finally then, our production overheads 280 multiplied by 2. So 560. And that's all we have in relation to job 6834. So we're ready to balance up our account. If we sum the debit side, you should get 6750. Finally then, our balancing figure, so 6,750 minus 250 gives us 6,500. Now we just need to be a little bit careful here. Remember in the question we were told that by the end of the month, job 6,834 was still incomplete. So our balancing figure of 6,500 doesn't represent the value of our finished goods because the job's not complete yet. Instead, this is our closing balance or the value of our closing work in progress. And that will be our opening value for job 6,834 in the following period.